Hey, what's up, guys? Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the second live development session, this amazing experiment that I'm doing. And the first time was kind of weird and clunky, and I didn't really know what to do now. I'm more confident. It's not true at all. But I decided to start right away and go and start this live development session and just wait for you guys to join and check the video. You can totally leave comments in the YouTube page or inside the Hangout. You can ask me to join the Hangout and I will check. You always notice, you notice that I'll always turn on my left to check the video and what's going on. I have a second screen with the Hangout video, the chat. So every time you write me something and I will watch it here, I can take a look at your at your comments and I can check pretty much everything. But let me just access the YouTube page because sometimes YouTube is weird. It's not like I have both comments on the Hangouts page and I have the comments on the YouTube page. And sometimes they're not in the same place. So I have to check multiple times two different pages and it's kind of confusing, but I will try to keep it up and not make a mess. Okay, I have comments here. I have my hangout here. Okay, we're ready to go. So what we want to do today, there's a siren and it's passing, of course. I live in downtown Vancouver and it's freaking noisy every time. There's always someone who needs a system, but drinking coffee. Yes. It's up here. Ah, now we can. So, uh, sorry for the microphone. I don't have a better way to put it and let you guys hear me talking. I also used to have a nice pop filter, like the foamy one, really good, but my dog ate it and he destroyed my pop filter, so I cannot use it yet. But anyway, my girlfriend is looking at me like in a weird face. Uh, let's get started. Let me share my screen. So I want to show you what we're gonna do today, what we're gonna do now. And of course, guys, you can join and you can ask questions while I'm coding and you can ask me to join the Hangout. So if you want to talk to me and if you want to be a part of this wonderful Hangout, you can totally do it. So let's screen share. Uh, share screen one, share. Present to everyone. Yeah, now you can see my screen. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Okay, so this is the current status of my team. We have the latest uh, blog post in these three categories. There are news, reviews, and tutorials. And I'm watching like here with a standard structure. Pretty basic, pretty standard, nothing complicated, nothing fancy. The thing I want to do today, I want to make it a little bit more fancy. So I want to create a nice carousel on the home page. You know, those nice slider rotator with the latest blog posts, something like really nice to see. And it's a good way to uh, funneling the users into a better experience than like showing a post like that. They're pretty, pretty ugly, right? Yeah, they're gross. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use, because my team already used Bootstrap and I already have all the CSS and JavaScript code from Bootstrap, I'm going to just use the Bootstrap markup to create my carousel, my rotator. And uh, that's it, pretty much. So <laughs> let's get started coding. So the first thing that I have to do, I have to access my code and I have to paste the markup of Bootstrap. Let me check the bootstrap markup. So I have here the bootstrap page. Let's access the 
getbootstrap.com. I am in the JavaScript section. If I click on carousel, I'm going to access the carousel section that is the pre-made uh, component for this rotator that Bootstrap has and offers for free to users. So I can absolutely copy the markup here, the example markup that I have, and I can paste it in my team. And exactly, I'm going to paste it inside the row here. Paste it. It's going to look kind of confusing at the beginning, but we have to make it prettier, right? So we have to redo this entire markup and take care of everything. So first of all, the markup of the bootstrap carousel comes from an ID that is necessary to update to make it dynamic based on if you click on the chevrons, arrows, or you click on the bullet list. So if I can show you here, this carousel is working. Every time I click on a chevron, it's just changed one slide, and I can navigate the slides through the bullet points. This is working because both bullet points, oh, sorry, both bullet points and chevron they point with an href to the ID of the actual carousel container. So I have to specify my own ID if I want this to work properly. And I'm not going to call it carousel example generic, but I'm going to call it awesome carousel. So now all the indicators and chevrons and bullet points, they have to refer of, to my awesome carousel ID. So just replace this code da, 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 da. oh two viewers hello viewers welcome if you didn't check the beginning you can ask me questions whatever you want and keep it up that's beautiful one viewer just one left oh sorry okay let's keep going updating where's the yeah the h uh, and here and the structure of the carousel is pretty standard. We have our indicators that has it's a numeric ordering list, and we have our wrapper container for the inside, the inner carousel. This is the main container of the carousel, and every item it is a single slide. So every item has to contain our blog post. So we have to repeat our blog loop to generate different items and this is like really really easy don't don't worry it's gonna be like it's gonna be ready in no time you're gonna see so i can remove the second item here because it's a, an unnecessary markup i create some space here and inside here i can put this is my caption and i have the image so everything is ready to be used and i have my carousel indicator so what i want to do i want to just paste this cut remove it there and paste it inside here inside the carousel container there is the wrapper that contains all my slides so let's paste it here Let's make some further indentation. That. And now, instead of calling the template part content future, I can call the template part, I can call another template part. I can create a different template part that contains the markup of the slider, of the single slider. So let's, for now, before like applying a template part, let's just input manually the actual markup. So instead of this class here, we remove it, we put this class here. And in here, we can create, we can reuse the markup that we used in the content feature it template part and we can copy the post thumbnail inside here 
for our image tag. And the carousel caption, we can use both the title and category inside our carousel caption h1 tag. All right, h1 is the title. It's inside the h1. The actual carousel caption is div. So let's save it. For now, we remove the indicators because we have to take care of them in a separate way. Save it. We go in our front end. Refresh it. And we see we have our structure. We have our carousel structure, but it's not actually working because what is happening is that every carousel item is an active item. So by default, how the WordPress carousel works, uh, the WordPress carousel needs the first element or at least one element, one, I one item inside your carousel to be active. Uh, if this is a loop, this is a repeater. So this container div is, has been repeated every time with the active class. So we are seeing we are watching every time we have these three blog posts that are always active. So there are no other items because for him, all those three items are active. We have to actually activate just the first item, how we can do it. This is really simple. Because this is a repeater, we can count how many times this loop is being executed. And every time a loop finish, we can increase a variable, a numeric value, to check the, the actual number. So every time we have a loop, number one. We have a, uh, another loop, the variable is two. We have another loop, the variable is three. So we count every time this loop goes on. And to do that, we have to create our own variable that we're going to call it like dollar $count SQL. Let's start with a zero value. and while starts the loop and while ends the loop. So before the end while, we can increase the value of variable, of the variable count. So because we specified an integer, a numeric value in our PHP variable, PHP will recognize this, this is a number. This is not going to contain a string. This is not going to contain other uh, data different than an integer, different than a number. So if we put a plus plus after the variable, because the variable is an integer, it's going to increase. So from zero, it's going to go after the first loop, it's going to go two. After the second loop, it's going to go, sorry, it's going to go one. After the second loop, it's going to go two, and so on, so on. Now, because we have this variable that changed, that has been, it's been updated, Oh, shit. I don't know. <laughs> so be, now we have this variable that gets updated every time we have a loop, we can check what's the current number of the variable. And just because we want the first item to be active, we can check if the variable is zero, we can paste this active status. If it's not, we don't paste anything. So we delete the active class, we open our PHP tags, and we declare a super simple if statement. So if dollar count it's equal to zero, so active semicolon, and if so, let's save it. Let's go in our front end. Let's refresh it. Open our tag to see what's going on here. Inspect element. And we have our left, right div carousel is inside here. We have item, three item active. I didn't reload, save it, page home, refresh the page, still active. Why the count is not being updating if post 
while and while if okay if sometimes sometimes this thing happened that you create a code and it's not working and the first time so don't panic now the code has some you can totally fix it you can totally check what's going on what's not working so if this code is not working we have to check what's the variable why this variable is not updating so for him this variable is constantly zero so let's check and let's print here an echo let's print dollar count and let's say uh, this is my count we can see What's up? This is my count zero, zero, zero. So this variable is not being updated. Let's force it. Equal dollar count plus. Hmm. That's odd. here hmm. can not update the variable hmm that's really weird mm -mm 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 -mm. probably I'm gonna cut this part because it's really it's really embarrassing like this should totally work. This should absolutely work. It's really odd that it's not working. And plus plus. Okay, if I don't do anything and I put this one to one, it's gonna be. Okay, now at zero, carousel actives. If I like manually activate carousel, then I have my carousel. Okay. And uh, zero offset extra one. Okay. Uh, sometimes happen this stuff. And while Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I got I got the problem. So what the problem was that this is not a loop. The while is not looping anything because we set the post per page just one. So it doesn't even do one single loop. So it cannot increase the number. So we have to actually put the increase, the count increase inside the for each because it is this for each that loops three times inside our variable, not the, the while container. Sorry, I, I totally mismatched. So let's put the count variable before the for each and we declare it zero as usual. And before the end of the for each, we put the count increase statement and then we have here if count equals zero let's put active and refresh here and that's it now it's working and that's beautiful and we have also our carousel that it's working so let's take the inspector and see what's going on here i don't know uh, i don't know if i can zoom the inspector i don't think so but Anyway, probably you can totally see in here. So we have now our carousel container. We have our three items and we have our active class that it's been declared just for the first element. And because the carousel by default is as an autoplay, it's gonna change the class based on every item. So this is pretty gross looking, right? <laughs> this is not good. First, we're, we're missing one of the coolest part of the carousel that is the bullet point. So we have to generate the bullet points to match our 
three slides, and every time we click on a slide, that click should redirect, should put the actual slide, the real slide, as active. So how we can do it, as usual, it's pretty simple, but it's kind of different because if we remove the comment here from the indicators, so you can see the indicator is um, ordered list and to for every indicator we have a Lee element that has to be inside the OL class carousels indicator. So we cannot repeat these inside our loop. Otherwise, we're going to have multiple repetition of the all and Lee. We should have like just one opening of the carousel indicator and then three Lee target. So what we have to do, we have to create another variable that stores our bullet points, our bullet list, and then we have to print that variable at the end of our loop inside our carousel indicators container. So let's grab the indicators containers container. Let's put it here at the end. So I have the time to let my PHP generate the data. Let's, hey, let's cut this Lee. I'm going to use it as a template. And inside the loop for every single blog post, I'm going to use, I'm going to put it here. But actually, I have to store this information inside a variable. So like I did for the count, let's create a variable called bullet equal empty variable. And now here I can put this information inside my variable bullets. So bullets dot equal e dot equal sentence PHP is it means that you don't have to override what's inside a variable, but you have to dynamically add that information to that variable. So you don't empty the variable. If I didn't put the dot, this variable would have been like overwritten every time. Instead, with a dot on top, I'm just adding new pieces. So I'm increasing the elements inside my variable. Uh, maybe that could work better if I open and close PHP tag because it's a PHP statement. And the thing also that we have to do, every single bullet, every single Lee class, Lee element, has to point to a specific data slide. The data slides are numeric and are dynamic based on the position. So every time we have an element, it starts from zero, then it goes to one, two, three, and so on, so on. So we cannot leave this number always to zero. Otherwise, every button is going to point always to the first slide. And it doesn't matter which one I hit. Just to give you a, 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 an example, I'm going to show you what's going to happen if I don't change the data slides to zero. So let's grab this variable and let's echo print this variable inside my Carousel container indicators. Uh, front page, refer, oops, sorry. <laughs> Wrong shortcode. Refresh. Where are my. Uh, okay, they're here. We cannot see it because they're white. So let's do a little bit of CSS and let's say that my carousel class, I want to be black with a dark background. Let's open our awesome CSS and let's say carousel, carousel, background, zero, zero, zero. Save it. Okay. Oh, I can see bullet points. So now, because first we have two problems. The first problem is every button has a class active. We had the same problem before that every element was an active element. And this one, we know how to solve it, right? We can check the if statement in the position and we can change the active. The other problem is that every time I click, it doesn't matter where I am. If I click on it, 
is going to go back to the first slide because it points to the slide number zero that for him is the first time, the first class. So every time I click, no matter which bullet I click, it goes to the first class. We have to change this behavior. To change this behavior, we can solve it in a super simple way. We already have a variable that is storing a value number that starts from zero and then increase every time we have the loop. So it goes from zero, one, two, and the variable is count. The thing that we have to do, we have to just print this variable here. Save it right here, refresh it. And now you notice if we access the continue here, the data slide changed and we have a zero, one, and two. So every time I click, it goes to the actual slide that I'm interested to. See, it's working. Now let's solve the last problem that is the active class that it's always showing inside my markup because I have the active class here. What we have to do, we have to use the exact same code that we have here. So let's copy this code. Let's interrupt PHP here. Let's close the PHP. Let's put our if statement and then let's reopen the PHP and echo this part. So this is a mark. This is a, a, a way of writing that you can change. Of course, it's not that you have to follow this logic. You can also use a different if statement that can be put in line inside an echo, or you can create another variable with the active class inside and then print the class inside the echo like a different account. It's up to you. I like to use this uh, structure because for me, like it's easier to understand as a more clean, even if sometimes like I have to split the markup in different variables, it's, it's not a problem. Here also, you have to be careful because you cannot use the echo because we are not echoing any variable, but we're storing our data inside the bullets class. So we always have to recall the bullets class and put everything we want to print inside the bullets class. So now we are building this class, the bullets, uh, the bullets variable, sorry, not the bullets class. We're building this variable with our, all the information that we need. And we are calling the active class. We are printing the active class inside the bullets variable just if the actual bullet points is in the first position. Save it. Let's go in our front end. Reload again. And let's go check here. Let's stay with the arrow on top. So the slider is not going to start. And as you can see here in the container, we have our just our first element that has the class active and the other two elements, they don't have an active class. And we have our marble slider. Let's keep styling this slider, but for what concerns the PHP version, the generation of the markup of the slider, we're pretty much done. We have our slider that it works and we can just style it through CSS and through other comments to make it look prettier. So for example, instead of the thumbnail here, I want the full size. So full, fresh, and we have this massive, massive pictures that are here. So, um, I don't like this final result. Because of course we have, I'm using square featured images and the carousel adapts based on the uh, image size. So if I add different images size inside my three uh, blog posts, that would mean that every time I change one slide, the um, size, the height of the slider would change. And it's really bad, like bad looking. So what we can do, we can create a class that, that puts our um, image full 100% and 
our carousel, we can create a fixed height and remove the overflow. So put overflow hidden. In this way, we're gonna, what's this white point? Is that, is that an image thing? That's nice. Anyway, with the overflow hidden, we're gonna um, create a pre-made, oh, is the bullet, sorry, this white thing is like bugging me a lot and is the list. Oh, so now I understand is the list because this element is a list element. Anyway, stop talking, I'm gonna show you what to do. So first of all, we can keep edit this CSS style. We have our carousel class that it's here and inside we have our carousel inner and item. So I can style every item as I want. So I want to say that carousel item have a fixed height of 200 pixel and an overflow item. So I don't want that elements that are higher than 200 pixel will be visible. So because the element has an overflow hidden, every element inside that container is not gonna be visible if they are bigger than 200 pixel. Save it, drag it here, refresh, refresh. Hey, Roland, <laughs> welcome. That's nice. This is the second time that you're here. I'm super impressed. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Refresh. Uh, let me check my markup. It was not working. I don't actually remember the markup of WordPress, so I don't know if I'm using properly. Carousel inner item. Okay. Let's, oh, sorry. I wrote wrong. It wasn't carousel, it was carousel. You see an E. Save it. Go in front end, refresh, and that's it. Now we have our carousel that has a 200 pixel fixed height and all our elements inside, uh, because the container is an overflow hidden, the picture doesn't go over that height. It's it's pretty short, so let's increase maybe 300. It's gonna be slightly better. Yeah, it's okay. Now, what can I do? What I can do is I can modify the image and force the image to be 100% width, so to fill the entire area of my carousel. And to do that, I say carousel, image so every time i have an image inside the item element i will put width 100 percent and height auto because i don't want the image to be stretched and that's it now i have my image that it's a hundred percent and it's my height auto uh, just to show you what's going on, I can remove from my item the overflow hidden. So you can see that now you cannot actually see because I think the overflow hidden is a preset. So I can put overflow visible. Oh, it's the carousel that has an overflow hidden. Yeah, that's it. There you go. Now you can see here that my image maintains the ratio so it's not has not been stretched but it's been expanded it's been increased the width to fill the hundred percent of my carousel so i can have always a full carousel a carousel item filled with my elements if i want i can like style it a little bit more for example i can like increase it to 350 and i can say that my image Margin top, I wanna put a minus one em, or let's say, I wanna go up uh, minus 25%. And let's see, I can change it a little bit more. And the inspector is really useful because you can select 
whatever you want. You can edit the style live and see what's going on. So I want to put, yeah, I want to put my kind of icon at the center. So minus 35%, that's kind of good. Refresh. And of course, if I click on the title, I go straight into my blog post. So everything works. It's a nice funnel. It's a nice uh, first page that it's pretty standard on pretty much every nice website. We have this kind of good thing. <laughs> we have this kind of like slider carousel that helps the user to be introduced to the uh, content of the website. So we we just built our first carousel. So let's modify something else. So um, let's change the color of this thing because of course is standard blue is a standard color of every link. And it's, it's kind of ugly because we know we have an image in the background. So let's make it white. To make it white, we can just check the markup and how to refer to the markup. So we can say that if we have a link inside the carousel caption, this link has to be white. So let's copy the carousel caption class. And if we have an A element that is always a link, we can say that its color is white. Save it, refresh, and we have our links white. So it's way better looking. Now we have these, as you notice here, we have this like weird alignment. It's not central aligned because the container, the, sorry, the categories uh, PHP variable from WordPress, the category function for WordPress, I couldn't find a word, is printing a list, an ordered list. I don't want a list. I don't really don't care about the list. It's kind of like, not good looking and I can print, I can change the, um, how the, uh, I'm, I'm losing more words, sorry, how the categories function is printing, what is printing. So the category, this is the function that prints my actual category. If I want this to print a different markup, so not a list, I can specify the separator. So by default, it's gonna print a list. If I put like an empty arguments inside, this function is gonna print uh, no markup at all. It's gonna just print the actual link. This means that if we have multiple categories here, each category is going to be separated by then a blank space. In here, we can put a comma, so we can say that every category has to be separated by a comma, or we can put a word or a symbol or wherever we want, but we can specify how this function has to print my categories and has to order these categories. So because I'm printing an empty variable, an empty string, the system is going to return an empty string. And that's way better looking, right? <laughs> that is a good, a good website introduction. It, the images are kind of crappy, of course, and it's not like really, it's not a perfect introduction, but it's way better than it was before. It's way more entertaining for the user, and we can check here what's going on. Uh, let me put also another thing just to... I'm inside the row class, so I want here to be the class call says 12, just creating a container to wrap everything properly. And now you can see here my carousel is aligned, it's probably aligned to my actual elements of the entire page. And because I did this in the page on template, I'm not having this carousel in other section of my website. So that's pretty great, right? Um, do you guys have questions?
do you have doubts or something else? <clears throat> Actually, I should drink something. That's my first. Let me check. Oh, I have three viewers. And uh, thank you so much, guys, to <laughs> who watch. Waiting, no questions at all. Okay, I can keep going if you want. The other, yeah, let's keep going. It's fine, it's fine, totally fine. Uh, no question, no doubts. Thank you, Roland. It's always having, it's always nice having an answer during these sessions. Sometimes it's like talking alone to no one, to an empty microphone. But anyway, the other thing that I want to do, I want to style a little bit better my blog page. So now my blog page is pretty ugly, it's pretty standard, is ordering all my blogs one after another without nothing fancy to show. The thing that I want to do, I want to create a nice structure with one single blog post on top and two blog posts and a grid of two and then three blog posts with my with just the future image to show 100% and it's going to create a nice well-built grid. So let's build this nice grid. So first of all, let's, let's access my index, where is the actual page that manage the blog loop. First, we have to create the actual markup. So before touching, even touching the HP code, we can create the markup. If class row, create. So the first row has to contain uh, well, excess 12 because I have a 12 column grid. I'm saying that the first row is like 100%. Then I have down here two elements with six. And I have the second element with six. And I can let's print something inside. So it, this is, uh, sorry, full size. This is half size so I know visually what I'm talking about and then we can create a third size that is a div class of excess or and we call Third, uh, third size, and we repeat it three times. So four, eight, twelve. Save it. If I go in my own page, I have the full size. Let's put everything like text center aligned. Text center. These classes that I'm using are pre-made classes from Bootstrap. So don't worry if you don't know what I'm doing or uh, save it. Now it's all nicely central line. So uh, we have our full size that is 100%. So contain uh, occupies the entire area. We have our half size that is half and half. And we have one, two, and three. Nice. Now we have to print inside this structure our blog posts. Uh, that's really, really easy. We already know everything, how to do it. And we can use both post formats or we can use an inline thing. 
For now, I'm going to use an inline, and later, at the end of the lesson, I'm going to swap everything to post format. So I'm going to make something really, really better organized. So let's start by putting this structure inside my class row with my sidebar because I don't want the structure to be outside, but I want it here inside this left column with the sidebar on the side. So let's cut my structure and put it inside the call here. And because it's here, now it's inside my left bar. Yeah, see? Everything is in here, and I have my left bar is on uh, my right bar, my sidebar is on the right, so no problem. So now inside my blog loop, I have to check if the first blog post I'm gonna print it inside a full, if the second and the third I'm gonna put it in a half, if it's after the third blog post, I'm gonna use this for this three blocks row. And to do that, we have to do exactly the same how I did for the curl result. So I have to create a variable called, I can use it another name or I can use a different one. Like for example, I can use a variable E, sorry, a variable I, and then this variable is zero. And inside the loop, this is the actual loop of the post, I can increase the variable. So every time we get a loop, this variable is gonna pass from zero to one, two, three, four, and so on, so on. So we can use super simple PHP. Okay. Let's remove the template part. And let's use PHP tag. If dollar i is equal to zero. And if to close. So if the i variable is equal to zero, it means that we are in the first loop. So it's the first blog post. And I can use this, the full size. And in the full size, I want to print as usual, my information. And for now, because I don't want too many information, I can print exactly the same. So I have my thumbnail, oops, sorry. I can print my thumbnail, I can print my title, and I can print my category name. So for check-in, uh, let me leave some space. Check-in here, fast boss thumbnail div class thumbnail, we have our thumbnail, title, category. So this is the first, if. We can put another statement and say else, if. Else, if, or all together, we can write it down attached. It doesn't matter, it's gonna work. Else, if. Bigger and zero, so it means that it's one and, so if it's bigger than zero and it's smaller or equal to, so until it's one and two and is not bigger than two, use this structure. So I'm gonna use call excess six. Let's copy the same markup. Paste it here, and let's change it called excess six. Save it, and last statement: else, if i is bigger than two, so it's three, four, and so on, and so on. We're gonna use the excess four, so the third size. Let's go be the same markup. Save it, says four. And let's remove this. Let's 
keep it open, the row text center container, and let's close it here. Leave it, go here, refresh, and I did something wrong here. So index PHP line 29, line 29, I wrote something funky. It's here, else if. Else if, and is minor equal to, yeah, sorry. So <laughs> if you use this, if this format, you have to put else if all together as a single statement. Refresh and also here the category, let's specify an empty string. Otherwise we're gonna have that ugly bullet point that we don't want it, remove it. Uh, the category space, the category space, the category space, save it, refresh, that's it. So we have our marvelous information here. So pancake recipe and Lauren Mipson, I don't have a featured image, but I want a featured image. So let's access our administration panel. Let, ups, let's upload a featured image. That is one, it's my wonderful face for the pancake recipe and the Lauren Mimpsum. Let's upload this blue pattern, save it, refresh so I can see everything. Now I have my structure, I have my default structure how I want it. So I have my first row that it's full, the second row is two and two, and the third row is one, two, three columns. Now let's, make it prettier. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty freaking ugly, right? We, we don't want to release a team like that. I want these images to be 100% and fill the entire area. And I want the title to be on top of my image with a nice uh, text shadow. So I want to pretty much something like that with a nice structure also in here. To do that, it's pretty much everything through CSS. So first of all, we have to declare um, we have to declare a common variable to set the fixed height. Before doing that, if you notice here, I have a pretty cluttered PHP file. I have a pretty repeated markup. It's always the same, and it's it's kind of it's it's pretty ugly. It's kind of weird. I I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So let's do something completely different. Let's change this markup to use the template parts. So let's do this. First of all, as you can see, I have this markup that changed just the value here. So we have always have excess and we have the first line is 12, the second is six and the other line is four. So we could integrate all these statements inside one single row and change variables to store the, this number. So for now, if I can change it in if dollar one is dollar i is equal to zero, I can put dollar column is equal to 12. And then I can use this else if. Second statement. Color column is equal six. And the last statement it's dollar column equal four and and if. So now what I have to do, I have to just leave one single markup and I can delete everything else because I don't need to repeat the same markup every time. And instead of having a fixed number here, I can just print the variable. That is the variable echo column. And let's go into our front page and the structure didn't change because we're using the same exact structure. But now instead of having a huge massive file with the same repeated markup, I just have 
one statement of the markup and I can manage more this part. So now what I can do also to make it even easier to update and more clear my code, I can put these entire markup inside a template part and I can generate a content template part. So let's create a new file called content-blog.php. <clears throat> Sorry. Let's cut my markup and let's paste it in here. Let's reorder it. Save it. Let's go here. And now inside the loop, I have to just to call the PHP get plate part content second string block. Refresh, let's go in the home page, refresh, and now I have this part. So the thing that is happening, it's, oops. I, the content blog here cannot access the column variable that it's inside this page. To pass the variable to this template part, I should use a global variable. So I have to make it global and it's kind of okay to do that. We can just simply state global column. And now this is a global variable that can be accessed in other section of our template, but better to avoid this thing. And it's not that bad to have your markup in line here and not use a template part for this simple part that it there are not like this is a not huge markup and we're gonna streamline even more and it's gonna look even better so it's not that bad we can leave it like that if we have to use this specific variable and these specific statements so now we have this markup let's reload and let's see we have our nice aligned structure. So now we can specify a container to have a fixed height inside. Div class log element. I'm totally made up, like I'm totally creating on the fly the class's name. You can always use your own names. You don't have to follow mine. I kind of use this to I like it. <laughs> it's the first thing that I got in mind. And uh, I can use display block and height. I can put on a height of 200 pixel and an overflow hidden. So elements that are higher, that are taller than 200 pixel are not going to be outside my container. And in here, let's refresh it. And I have my 200 pixel element. These are 200 pixel, 200 pixel. I see the title is outside and it get cut, gets cut out because it's higher than 200 pixel. But we're going to change this markup. So no problem. It's going to really look good. No problem. Don't worry at all. So now instead of having the post thumbnail printed as an actual image, I want to print it as a background image. To do that, I have to extract the URL of my post thumbnail, and I have to get the URL of the post thumbnail. And to do that, we have a pre-made WordPress functionality, of course, that is really, um, it's really simple. It's really like pretty much WordPress can gives us all the assistance that we want. Every time we have an idea, oh, I would like to do that. WordPress already have a function that we can use and make it super simple. So we can keep if post has post thumbnail and inside this 
PHP code, you can create a variable called URL image equal, let's get the, instead of the post thumbnail, if we use the post thumbnail, this function is gonna already, is gonna immediately print our image tag. Instead, if we use get the post thumbnail, we will have the uh, post object, the actual array with all the information inside and we can extract our URL with the WP underscore get attachment URL. And inside we can write our second hook, our second function that is get D post. Sorry, we had the get post thumbnail ID and we have to specify the post ID. We already have the post ID. We are, we are inside the loop, so we can get D ID. We close here with the usual semicolon and we get the end of X. To check if this thing is working, we can print, we remove this markup here that we don't use it, we can print echo color URL image. Save it. One page. And see, now every blog post is printing the URL of my actual image. So now I can apply the URL as a background URL inside my markup. Fairly easy. First of all, I want this markup to be inside my blog element. So let's take this PHP code. Uh, first of all, let's remove this. Take this PHP code and put it outside the block element. And here we can put style background image URL and we print here what we printed before. Echo color URL image. Save it in our front end and we have our image. Now everything is like super messy and really not good looking because our image has been printed in full size and of course doesn't respect the boundaries of our elements. What we have to do is through CSS, we have to style the container. To style the container, we just use the same blog element class and we apply a background position. First of all, I want to be center and center. So perfectly at the center, both vertically and horizontally then I don't want the image to be repeated. So no repeat. And I want the image to have a size of a cover. A size, a background size cover means that the picture doesn't matter how big it is, it's going to cover the 100% of your size and the CSS is going to automatically resize to fit both width and height of your element. This is really useful because it works beautifully in responsive. So you can see now it doesn't matter the height and the size of my picture, this thing works. So even if I resize it and it's dynamic, so it's responsive, the picture is gonna adapt to my container. And it's great, it's really great looking. So let's keep going, let's finish styling this thing and let's say that all the elements, all the A tag inside the blog element, they have to be white, like this one. And because I have the same class, I can just put a comma and say blog element A color attack. And they're all F. And then now, just to make it like kind of better, so I can. Separate, 
Um, I can use also text shadow. I can use a zero, one pixel, three pixel, a GBA, zero, zero, oh, comma, uh, 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 point five. And I have my nice shadow. So now I have another issue. I have this. Because I have the structure with my bootstrap, by default, bootstrap has a padding element to each container. I can remove the padding, but it's better not because the padding, it, if we remove dynamically the padding like here, you're going to see what it's going to look like. Like this. They're going to overlap elements, so I cannot remove the padding to all the columns that I want, but I have to remove dynamically the padding to just some specific column to create these nicely aligned elements. So in my case, I have to remove the padding to the first and the second, just on padding right and padding left, and I have to remove the padding to these containers, but without removing these outside elements. To do that, I can use CSS through custom classes. To apply the custom classes, I can use the loop and my favor. I can change and apply a custom class to specify what I want. So for example, in the first case, I don't want to change the padding. So here I can put column this one is the option if I'm on the second row. So I have two columns of six. I can use class equal second. Uh, let's specify as a string second row. Padding. Otherwise, class. Equal third row padding. And now we can print our class here. Let's create a space. Plus. Let's refresh. And now I have in my first row, this one, I don't have any class. In this two elements, I have the second row padding. And in these three last elements, I have the third row padding. So now I can do whatever I want through CSS because I have these custom classes, custom selectors that are applied to my structure. So let's use some nice pseudo element from CSS3. So let's use this second row don't remember the class that I applied, second row padding. So second row padding, first child is padding right zero. And the one is the second row padding last child is Padding left zero. Let's go check what it did. Uh, second row padding. Second row padding is first child. Oh, it's not working. What am I doing? Let me check the syntax of CSS padding right zero. Let's open better in the inspector. Hmm, that's odd. Let me go check. First child. Ah, 
Well, I can use another one. NT out. And NTH child two. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, it starts as usual in development, coding language. The array starts from zero. So second row padding. It was, ah, oh, that's. Okay. <sighs> Finally, it's working. So <laughs> I didn't use uh, the first child, the last child, but I used the nth child. This pseudo class element, nth dash child, gives us the ability to select dynamically based on the number position of the element. Uh, a specific element, of course, and to apply dynamically a class to that specific element. So I'm saying that the second element here and the third element here, they don't have to have the second, the padding right, zero, and the third, the padding left, zero. So I'm not causing any issues. I'm not destroying the padding on the left and on the right. Everything, the padding is still here and is still active and it's working nicely, but I'm removing the padding that separates the elements. So everything can be nicely aligned. Let's do the same here. So let's say that the third row is padding. Now I wanna remove to everything it's padding zero. So I remove to everything padding zero, but also these two elements, they don't have any more the padding zero. So I can do the third row. Let's check if the last child, last child working, padding right 15 pixel. It's working, this one's working. So I have to apply the same for the first child. First child padding left is 15 pixel. Oops, uh, sorry. Oh, I open a lot of tabs by mistake. So the first child doesn't work. So let's use the empty child, too. <laughs> That's the magic of CSS. The row potting. Oh, sorry. This first child, this one. Three, four. Done, finally. <laughs> that was more complicated than PHP. That's funny. So we have um, what is happening actually here because my child number is not actually uh, respecting my second row ordering. Like the first one, this should be zero, but it's actually two. two. Uh, sorry, the first one should be one, but it's actually two because for him, this second row padding is applied to the class container. So if I want to separate this, I have to put it inside the XS. So I have to remove this one for him, this call XS, all these things are exactly the same. That's why it's counting everything inside the same loop. So it's, Kind of looking beautiful, right? I have my blog posts nicely aligning in this kind of nice grid. And I have the title on top. I have the category where they belong on top. And 
everything works. My homepage, I have this, my blog, I have this. So the thing that I have to do now, it's three and 16. I think, in, I think I'm gonna stop right now because we did the nice slider in the homepage and we did the nice style, tiled uh, visualization in the blog page. So it's kind of nice. It's kind of good. It's a good point. Next, I think is in the next lesson, I'm gonna create a content template for this blog because now, of course, we have a problem. Because we style the index.php to have this template, this component, every time we access a blog post, now we have this component. And if we don't specify a specific content element, every time we access a post, we have this markup that is kind of weird. Uh, we don't have any element, we don't have anything inside, so it's not really good looking, but I'm gonna tackle this issue in the next lesson. So do you guys have any questions, any doubts? If everything's good, I'm gonna stop this light development session. I noticed that I reached four um, viewers at the same time, and that's a good achievement compared to just two that I used to have the first lesson. So four viewers is freaking amazing for me, super happy. So let me know if you have any question, these two people that are here, or otherwise, thank you so much for sticking around as usual. <clears throat> All is good. Okay. Thank you, Roland. You're the only one that answers. Okay. Well, thank you so much to everyone who's participated to these live development session and to everyone double occupancy. <laughs> okay. Um, and thank you so much to everyone that is going to take a look to these live development session and I have some pretty good news that I'm going to release a blog, a vlog update in the next couple of days, probably. And I have some exciting news for everyone who wants to learn uh, something about PHP and wants to be like more uh, followed, like a proper teacher student lesson. I'm building this thing with a company that is something really cool. I have this collaboration and you're gonna know everything later. It's gonna be absolutely freaking free and it's gonna be awesome. So I'm really super excited, but let's roll back. Yeah, that's it, that's me, hey, hey, Batman t-shirt, yes. And anyway, thank you so much for participating to this development session. Thank you so much for checking this video and I hope to see you everyone whoever you are next time. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking this video and have fun coding your awesome template. See ya.